And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano, get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup, man. We got a great show for you today. We got the team from Fisherman's Processing. Sean and Melanie are here. We're going to be talking fish processing, fish care, the whole nine. Today is going to be a great show. Pete Gray is on his way to El Salto, having a big bass adventure. And you got Corey and I in the studio. We're going to be having a lot of fun. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. This is Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mighty Year 1090 ESPN Radio. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone. Whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a Sport boat. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. For your next fishing adventure, check Point Loma Sport Fishing. They offer half-day trips on the Daily Double and full-day trips on the Mission Bell every day. Perfect for novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips on the American Angler, Vagabond, Intrepid, Independence, New Loan, T-Bird, Game Changer, and more. Visit PointLomaSportFishing.com where you can purchase tickets online. Want to go fishing? Point Loma Sport Fishing has you covered. It's Ford Truck Month, San Diego. Time to get up and get into a new Ford F-150. Part of the F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 46 years straight. And here's some big news. There's a great selection of Ford F-150s in stock and ready for delivery today. So visit your San Diego County Ford dealer and see all the fantastic offers on America's best-selling trucks that are available during Truck Month. They'll be glad to hook you up. Hi, I'm Wendy Tochihara from Iserline. Stop by our booth at the Bard Hall Shows in Del Mar and Long Beach. Check out our new products, enter our knot tying contest, and ask questions of our Iserline fishing coaches at the Bard Hall Shows. See you there. Welcome! All right, welcome back to Let's Talk. You almost did it, Rick. Yeah, yeah you almost did it. But anyway, good morning. And man, it sure is nice to have the rain clearing and just a beautiful morning, man. I hate this weather. I don't well, care. No, I don't care what anybody says. No, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. can say whatever you want. I hate yeah. it. I hate it. God, I hate this so much. I want sunshine and fighting bluefin tuna. <laughs> well, I'm with you there. Raymond cutting my fish, and yeah. that's it. That's what I want. <laughs> well, who wouldn't want that? I, yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Well, we're sure stoked yeah. to have uh, Sean and Melanie from Fisherman's Processing in here. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Stoked to have you, man. What a I don't even know what to say. What a year this has been, and what a year for you guys. This was just crazy, the level of fishing that we had, and then the level of service that you guys have gotten us all used to. Like, this was wild. This was crazy. <laughs> I go back a few years, and this was absolutely crazy last year. It, it, it was, uh, you know, we, we have talked about it all year, you know, about how important it is. Reservations, reservations, that's the, the word of the day. And it was because you guys literally, you 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 were not only at capacity, over capacity, I mean, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but kind of like that was the level of fish that came through the doors of Fisherman's Processing this year. Has there ever been anything like this? Um, 
we try to be at capacity all the time, but this last year was over capacity for <laughs> sure. Crazy. But we didn't want to we didn't want to compromise our level of service either. Sure. So we we had to keep a keep monitor on it and make sure we didn't overdo it. Sure. It has been the you know the level that you guys at Fisherman's Processing have created throughout the years. I mean, it, it's just it's something that didn't exist pre 2010, and now there was so many people. You know, I, I would hear it all the time in the tackle store, like, oh, that's it. Like, this is the only you know, if, if I can't have my fish cut from you know that you know from Fisherman's Process, I don't you know I don't want to go or move my trip or figure something else out. I mean, mm-hmm. you guys have all gotten us so used to what it can be and just done such a good job mm-hmm. with it like i just can't imagine it's the final touch that like this fish deserves well yeah and it's people like melanie and the rest of our crew that makes that happen and you know we, that's why we have the following we do is because the good job that all the employees do no there's no doubt you know i mean there's so much that goes so much more goes into the like preservation of high-end product now than it used to be in we were all a part of it in the old days. You know, the boats would come in and the fish were frozen, big giant blocks, and the you know top of the dock would come. And Sean was running the red shirt crew, and you know everybody's pushing a cart as fast as they can. And a one fell swoop, the door comes open, and the fish like hit the Thought. hit the pavement, and you drag around. And the measure of success was how many cases of canned tuna you had at the end of it. And now. You know, you're bringing home this like seafood bounty, and there's so much effort put into spiking and bleeding and these gill and gut, and like the, the, there's this unbelievable product when the trip returns, and fisherman's processing like is the final touch that that fish deserves. Like Absolutely. there's so much that goes into it. Yeah, do you remember the days when we'd wrap it in butcher paper? Fisherman's canning did uh, fish processing, and we we wrap the fillets in butcher paper and freeze it. I think that's before me. Like I don't yeah, remember that, that even. That's like, where it kind yeah, of all, that's, that's all really the fish good. processing started. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> butcher paper. Cool. So crazy how far it's gone. Yeah, it yeah. really is, yeah. isn't it? It's 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 fun. I, I mean, like you mentioned, Rick, with the fish handling, the spiking, the bleeding, and taking care, you know, a hundred and ten percent to have Sean and Melanie on the other end to finalize the deal and. You know, I mean, whether it's three mil or five mil, your choices are there. And and uh, I've had, honestly, frozen bluefin from nine months or maybe even 12, 14 months. And it's it, it's as good two months as it is 14 months later, yeah, you know? Yeah. If you defrost it right, it's, yeah. it's like it, you it can't really even, almost can't even tell. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say I've actually had it that long, but it, <laughs> it, it, it actually freezes beautifully. It sure does. Yeah. What is the process like? Like, what is the, you know, what's the behind the scenes for you guys when the when the boat comes in? You know, we talked about those guys do, you know, all the crews do such a good job now keeping the fish as, as, as well as it can be, but... You know, the, the fisherman's processing touch starts before a lot of us as passengers even realize it. Like, there is no more top of, top of the dock thud anymore. Like, <laughs> what's the process like for you guys when, you know, the boat's backing in and we see the transom getting closer to the dock? How, how, is, how does fisherman's processing then take over? What's the process like for those that, you know, that aren't familiar? Well, we're, we're at the top of the dock, and obviously the, the, the quality of your fish starts with the, the boat handling it properly on the boat, and most of them do nowadays. And... Uh, Melanie would be at the top of the dock. She's ready to take your order if you have a reservation. Just the first thing you should do is, you know, secure your gear and then check in with us right away. Um, and then we'll go. We'll take it from there. We'll ask you the questions. I yeah. mean, we'll get some paperwork started and uh, start receiving your fish on on the Shogun, the Royal Star, and the Royal Polaris. We actually do dockside service, which means our bends are down on the dock, and we go. We get the fish delivered from the boat straight to our bends. And on the in, on those boats, they do the paperwork on the boat for you. So we already have the paperwork started. So I'm on a five day on the Shogun. When the boat's coming in, a crew member's already assisted you in getting the paperwork started. What do you want done with your fish? And you know, do you want us to cut it this way or that way? Do you want big portions or small portions? Do you yeah. want smoked fish or jerky fish? Like that's all that's all done on the boat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then the boat comes in. How do how do how does our fish get to how does our fish get to Melanie? Well, <laughs> you tell us, Melanie. We're doing dog size? Yeah. 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 So, like, the fish obviously in the hole. We come back. Our paperwork's already started. Like, that's always the fun story I love is just the the, the ease of the angler. Like, that's kind of it. Like, I'm I'm done. I don't have to yeah, I don't I have like, to look at it again until it's in a perfect, you know, until it's going on the Traeger. Well, I like them to check in with me at the top of the dock because that's when I go over the special instructions and we cut it accordingly to, you know, whatever their needs are. And then... 
what are the, what are some of the things that like exist like uh, special instructions? What what kind of things you know would you say are, are most common? What do people because I'm sure there's a lot of people you know going on a trip that that don't you know it, it's slightly intimidating. I mean you don't know like because you guys offer a lot of stuff and probably things a lot of us don't even know about. What are some of the you know the instructions that you guys offer to people when you're cutting fish? Well, we have smoked jerky cans. Um, tuna burgers, but then there's a lot of people that, you know, maybe want to can their own fish, and so they want it in, you know, larger portions, large lo- okay. loins, and yeah. so, you know, we can accommodate all that, you know, if they want half-pound packs, and then all that, once we get back to the shop, gets relayed to the fish cutters by writing instructions on the board, so we, you know, take care of everything the way the fishermen want their fish. So you can even do, you can do full, full whole loins if you want. Uh, and it kind of just comes vacuum packed in a big old, big old meat log. Yeah. That's cool. Um, sushi party. What's the, you know, I know that we've talked about stuff like that before, you know, Sean and Millie, like what's the, what's the best cut of it? Do you just take one of your regular one pound packs? Do you, you know, do you have a special, a special way that you guys like to do it? Like if somebody's wanting to do something like that, what's the best move? It's the, for the sushi cut, it's the piece behind the shoulder, big chunk right behind the shoulder. Okay. That's like the prime piece, and they're usually about three pound chunks, and that's for if you're having like a sushi party. That's what that's ideal I've for. always, yeah, I've always seen the tags that you guys have done sushi cut, but I never really necessarily knew like what, you know, if you're, if you're aiming for a certain piece or you're just looking for uniformity, if that's a certain part of the tuna, and, and... What, why that? Why that piece over something else? That piece is uh, it's the prime meat. It's really the, it's one that is a triangle shaped piece. Okay. And what it's used for is, and the reason we make a big block out of it is to make sak- saku blocks. And that's what you see in the sushi bar case, the little strips of tuna that's okay. called a saku block. And that piece is what's cut down into saku box. And you can go on our U- YouTube channel, uh, Fisherman's Processing YouTube channel, and I actually go through a video of me cutting down one of those sushi blocks into saku blocks. Okay. Wow, pretty you, cool. You guys do such a good job with your social media. I mean, so, so much so that I use it as a tool for myself to know, <laughs> like, how busy the shop's going to be in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's boats coming in, the boat caught this. Like, it's a great set aside all the things that you just talked about there, like all the how-tos that you've done. You you know, you guys have changed how we defrost our fish, you know, out of the freezer to use it. But there's so much cool information. But just to keep tabs on how the fleet's doing, like there's a fisherman's processing video every morning of, you know, hey, the Royal Polaris came in and they had 200 tuna and they had 50 wahoo. And it's like a really, you you guys do an excellent job of just keeping us abreast of what's going on. Yeah, I think it was two summers ago we got hacked. So our our Instagram page got taken away from us. Yeah. So I just wanted everybody to know our new one is called The Real Fisherman's Processing. I'm so glad that that's what you did. Start a new, screw whoever a-hole that did whatever they did. Like, nope, this is us now. Yeah. You no. keep it, whatever. Yeah, it was a bummer. We had a lot of followers, and they're you know they're slowly coming back. Yep. But the they, real fisherman. The processing. real fisherman's processing is our Instagram account. Okay, I like it now. So. You guys got us so hooked on fisherman's processing. Uh, obviously, the killer product. Uh, and then years down the road, you saw the opportunity for fish, you know, uh, fish pros the market and the FP gourmet. What's what's the latest and greatest? And give us the rundown of what's going on with all the other stuff that happens at fisherman's processing. Like the market, yeah. we, we have a couple new products. I don't know if we've talked about it, but we have a couple new rubs, and we got a, a ceviche mix that's just out of this world. It's so good. You just pour it in on a pound of fish, and just the way you go with your, you know, put some fresh vegetables in there, and you got it. It's so easy. Like the poke, you know, it's that's just, my favorite thing you guys so have ever easy. done. Mm-hmm. I, I'm really a little bit lame when it comes to cooking fish, and I'm such a a fan and user of the things that you guys do. Like I, I'm. I'm like notorious for a little bit of olive oil and you know and putting salt and pepper on on something and putting it on the barbecue and like the little bit of extra touch that comes with the fish it makes such a big difference and the poke kit was the best thing that ever happened to somebody <laughs> like me like it is it, it's beyond easy it's rip the bag open pour a little bit of sauce pour a little bit of spice mix it up and, and then right. then you're like a hero and you made this killer <laughs> poke that everybody's stoked on and there's zero work involved or it's just lunch yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really cool and i've been digging those uh the, the rubs and spices i mean just knowing that you guys make it all in house and there's no like secondary ingredients for anti-caking and all yeah. this 
It's all right. like one hundred percent. It's it's yeah exactly. There's nothing additional that that you're not going to want. No chemicals. Yes, yeah. there just, it is. Just a whole yeah. bunch of flavors. You, you have two real fans here, just so you know. That's no, that's no like smoke blowing. That's no like, oh, these guys are sponsored. Let's talk good about it. Like, we talk about it all the time. Like We're very real fans of the stuff you guys I'm a, do. I'm like, a fan. Yeah. <laughs> that, I, love, I love our products. The last one was the uh, uh, lemon pepper I used on uh, pork chops. Just Isn't it good? Ten, just eight or ten days ago. Yeah, on yeah. the Traeger. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. The it's, lemon it's pepper is great. Awesome. Smoke and S&P we just brought out, too. I'm a, I'm a Cajun everything. Sweet I Cajun, know, like, so yeah, that, that's that's me for I sure. Yeah. Shrimp from Point Loma Seafood, Sweet Cajun, that's like a once a weeker Done. at my house. Yeah, that's my oh, favorite. Boy. Yeah, that's so cool. So how did we get to where we're at now? Like, we talked about, you and I talked a little bit before the show started. Like, it has been crazy. We've been talking all about how important reservations are. What What happened? Was it just the caliber of fishing? Is it the amount of people? Like, how did we... How did we get to – I mean, you guys – I have seen it. I have seen fish pros when it's going full speed. Nobody wields knives and steel around like you guys. Like you're a – we joke, but you're like a wood chipper where a whole tuna comes in and a one-pound bag comes out. Like nobody goes faster than you guys. How did how did we get to this craziness of where we're at now? Well, you got to have a reservation because it's, it's so much. Well, I didn't even figure it out until we were starting to put the calendar together for next year, this season. And – I started looking at the returns on these, like, you know, this, for example, the Royal Polaris. And, you know, normally they would run a lot of six- to eight-day trips all throughout summer. That, sure. That, that brings them back to the dock once a week. Well, they started breaking those trips up into three- and four-day trips. So now you're looking at that returning every three every three days or four days. So that's two to three times a week. And... So you're doubling or tripling. And the limit's the, the same, though. The limit's the same on a three-day trip as a six-day yeah, trip. Yeah, because Me- Mexican... And they're catching limits. Because Me- so. Mexican limit is no matter how long the length of the trip, you get three days' worth exactly. of limit of product. Exactly. So. so the limits that are coming in are trip- doubled or tripled. So you're getting two to three seasons now worth of business in a single season. And, and that's what that's what I, I figured. <laughs> that's crazy. I, I crazy. figured it out after crazy. the season. I'm like, like, what the heck happened when I started putting my calendar together? I'm like, that's what happened. I figured it out. Yeah, because you guys can move some weight. If you haven't been to Fisherman's Processing, especially your new facility, which is so cool, um, that big window, like, viewing into the guy. I mean, it is, it is so impressive to see how fast – a, a big fish can get broken down into a perfect vacuum pack thing. Like, yeah. It's a it's a mega dual assembly line. Like if it's possible to get it done, it, it's not possible to get it done faster. I've watched. It's really a sight to <laughs> yeah. see. Oh, it really is. I can't believe how people do, just get glued to watching. It. It's addictive. You, know? you can't help it. it it's yeah, almost like watching a fire burn. You know, you just you just can't help but sit there and watch for it's, hours. It, yeah. it, it, it's fun <laughs> to see the pro. You know, it's fun to watch Raymond because you know, like every. It's different than how you cut a fish at home. Like everything is done with a purpose, and it's done in a different direction. And all of a sudden, like you know, you're used to seeing a crew member cut a fish on the sport boat, and then you watch Raymond go about it in a completely different way. The fish is orientated different, and the knife he uses is a different shape than most everybody else. And then all of a sudden, like you know, three strokes of the knife, and the fish is in yeah. parts and pieces. It's really cool. Yeah, he's very efficient. All of them are very efficient with their cuts. You know, if they cut from left to right, they don't just bring their arm back to the left. They cut back from right, right to left on the way back. You know, it, it, everything's very deliberate and, and uh, repeti- you know, the repetition of it is the same every time. Sure. How often are guys dealing with their, you know, the cutlery? Like, how often are, are knives getting sharpened? Is it at the beginning of the day? Is it between each fish? Like, how, how you know, and, and does that change from one station to the other. I mean, I know, you know, one guy kind of breaks a fish down and then the next guy, you know, portions it and cleans it. Like, what's the, what's, maybe let me, two things. What's the knife situation like and how is the process? Like, what is it, what does the fish do when it goes down the line? Well, the, the knife situation is they, they start the day off uh, with a sharp knife. So they either do it at the end of the day, the day before, or the morning of mm-hmm. the day. And then, you know, periodically through cutting the fish, they use the honing steel and, okay. keep, and keep that sharp edge going. 
Um, but on a busy day, they would go over to the whetstone and, and have to re-put an edge on sometimes. It's just uh, on a busy, busy day, that, sure. that's the way it is. You know, we're using the Anza knives, so those those Anza knives just really hold their edge like you can't believe. What an awesome partnership, seriously. Oh, I mean, it, it's perfect. been, what, it was four or five years now? Yeah, I got it, lost track. Like, yeah, it's roughly it's around there. Like, you know, you, gotta, you, you kind of take out the COVID years. Cause, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That, those don't that count. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. right, 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 right. But, but the Fish Pros <laughs> knives that uh, Anza puts out are just amazing. The, the high-carbon steel is uh, just uh, great to work with. It holds an edge. It, it's so darn sharp. It just cool. really is. And uh, so it, it, it makes the knife situation a lot easier. The less time spent on a knife is uh, is great because it's more time cutting fish. Right, right. That, that's another one of those things when you can tell the proof is really in the you know in the product because you guys could use anything and and can and have access to anything and you know your team cuts a lot of fish and if there was a better product it's what they would be using i mean you, you know you don't just sell that knife like that's you know that was built for what you guys do it's the fish pro like that's what it is it's the fish pro yeah <laughs> and, and we you know we sell them at our shop also and we sell we sold quite a few of them last year because we weren't able to cut some people's fish and i could offer them a knife <laughs> <laughs> I <dig it. laughs> how, how, how many different knives are there in the series there's four, four knives in the series we call there's one called the 6s and that s stands for skinning and that's the one raymond uses okay and it's got a it's it's kind of a skinny knife shape and then we've got the six which is just a a six inch blade and an eight and a ten so 50 pound or 250 pound raymond's using a six inch six inch (laughs) and like like wrap your mind around or 300 pound yeah Yeah. he's to to what we call carcass the fish yeah to take the the meat off the bones all the night all the guys use six inch for that Crazy. Oh, okay, that's cool. You start getting the longer knives when you're trimming because then you get nice smooth cuts with a longer knife. And so for trimming, you want a little longer knife, maybe an 8 or a 10. That's cool. This is one of my most favorite shows because we always pick up so much stuff that, like, I just don't think about. There's so much of that aha right. stuff. And, yeah, today's going to be a lot of fun, Corey. A lot of fun, Rick. And uh, definitely if you want to join us, uh, having Sean and Melanie in here from Fisherman's Processing and Fish Pros of Market, too, man. You got questions on any of that? We're here for you. And, uh Give us a call, 213-432-1090, and uh, text us via the uh, app. Only done through the app, really cool. It's a free download if you haven't done it yet. It's really the only way I listen to the yeah, show. Yeah, so much it's, easier. Whether it's uh, live or whether I'm listening to it during the week, from the weekend prior or whatever it is. So it's a, a free download there. You go to your app store and uh, and text us via the via the app or give us a call 213-432-1080 we're giving away a really cool prize no doubt right so a pair of costa sunglasses it's a 300 hundred dollar gift certificate and with that certificate you go on their site and you can choose uh, they've got them anywhere from 150 up to i mean maybe 290 dollars right like close to it i've been through the site and we sell a ton of glasses i don't i don't even know if they have a pair over so you're basically getting a certificate good for what i'm assuming is any pair that those guys make or like you said you could get multiples or you know maybe buy a 250 dollar pair and you spend the rest of the money on you know they got really nice gear their performance shirts and things like that yeah and uh their sweatshirts all that stuff backpacks and coolers and koozies and it's just a really cool prize and i i I could only imagine if you win this you could actually go to the festival yeah. this this coming week and actually pick a pair of frames or whatever you want to do right there from Bob Who's the Man. Yeah, that, right? that, that's a cool thing. Exactly. You can, you know, at the show, virtually everything they have is there. So you can get with one of the Costa Pros and figure out what frame fits your face the best and then talk to the guys and, hey, this is the type of fishing I do. And you might get a recommendation of an amber lens or a gray lens or I really like that silver mirror and you know, just kind of get it tailored to what you want, and then hop on the website, and a brand new pair of coasts is coming. Well, it's going to one lucky caller, <laughs> one lucky text, or we're going to have Melanie flip the coin at the end of the show. Again, 213-432-1090, or text us via the app. We're going to be right back. More with Melanie and Sean when we return on the Let's Talk a Kebab, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. The sports shows are coming, and it's the best time to buy that new boat you've always wanted. Rock Cod Rick here to remind you that West Coast Marine and Parker Boats will be at the PCS show, as well as the Bart Hall Long Beach show, this year showing off some of their most popular models of Parker Boats and Yamaha Outboards. 
Kevin Kelly is certainly responsible for putting hundreds of anglers and their parkers at the shows and at their Costa Mesa location of West Coast Marine. Carrying on the tradition that our friend Kevin Kelly did so well is his nephew Nick Kelly at their shop on Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa. Kevin was a fixture at the shows for many years and will be missed by all, but you can be assured that Nick will do everything possible to carry out Kevin's tradition of taking care of his customers and getting them in the right boat, outfitted the way you want. Nick will have several Yamaha-powered Parker boats at the show available for you to check out. Be sure to go by the West Coast Marine booth at the PCS show and the Bart Hall Long Beach show, or stop by their Costa Mesa location and share your memories of Kevin with Nick. Check westcoastmarine.com. Hayden Lane here from Fast Lane Kayaking, and I gotta tell you about all the rad new stuff we have in the shop. Like the fully updated new line of Hobie inflatable kayaks, the iTrek series. Hobie took the best selling i11S and made it even better. Then added new models like it, like the new iTrek 9 that weighs just 37 pounds, fully rigged, packs into a small bag with wheels, and fits just about anywhere. And on the water, this thing performs featuring a super wide and flat hole shape that is stable and an elevated beach chair style seat that is comfortable. Or the all new Hobie Mirage Lynx. Inspired by the shape of the inflatable kayaks, Hobie made a durable and ultralight hardtop model. It's the missing link. It looks like a hybrid of a stand-up paddleboard and a kayak. And the best part, at just 45 pounds, the hole weighs about half as much as similar sized kayaks. And it's stackable. Pile them up on your roof rack or your truck bed. You gotta see this thing, stop by the shop, right on the water in Dana Landing Marina in Mission Bay. Or check us out online at FastLaneKayaking.com. Hi, I'm Bart Hall, and I want to invite you to the 75th anniversary of the Hall Family Shows. Named by many as the Grand Annie of Mall, the Bart Hall Show at the Long Beach Convention Center, March 29th to April 2nd, has been the leader in outdoor recreation show production since 1946. And while you're there, please join the Coastal Conservation Association of California and help maintain California anglers' access to saltwater angling. Go to hallshows.com for more information. Hey anglers, AFCO Pro Captain Ben Florentino of Coastal Charters here. As a full-time guide, I'm on the water all year long. It's my livelihood. Having the right clothing is of the utmost importance staying warm, dry, cool and comfortable to endure whatever the Pacific wants to throw at me. Thankfully, I'm equipped with AFCO clothing to keep me dialed season after season. Do yourself a favor and check out AFCO's award-winning gear at a dealer near you or learn more at AFCO.com. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And man, just uh, what a fun day, fun show, and learning so much stuff. And man, Raymond using a six inch knife, I can't <laughs> believe it. Hey, anyway, give us a call, 213 432 1090, or you can text us via the app. Already a ton of text, and we're giving away a $300 Costa Sunglass uh, certificate at the end of the show. And just a fun one to be here, Rick. Yeah, no, no doubt. Lots of fun. And, you know, Corey, you, you, the thing that I, I, I crack up to you, you were saying, like, I can't believe Sean, or I can't believe Raymond, Raymond. uses a six, uh, excuse me, Raymond yeah. uses a six inch knife. The shape of the knife is very unique too. Like, we've all grown up on a sport boat looking at a, you know, at an eight inch Victor Knox. Like that was the knife that you know everybody grew up with, and you just get have that shape in your mind, and that's the, you know, the. The Fish Pros is a much higher end kind of version of that that style shape, and I'm used to using that knife that Raymond cuts with that skinning knife. It's very different. Do you know what it is about that oblong? Is it got a curvature? It, it does. Yeah. Like it's got. Yeah, Sean can ex- explain it the best. Instead of coming to a tip, it, it's kind of rounded at the end, it, and it's a skinny knife. It, it's the shape of a skinny knife. If anybody knows what a sh- skinny knife is. The reason for it is it gives really good feedback where the bones are. Oh, really? Because now you got the tip of a, a typical six-inch knife is very small. This is the very tip of a knife. Um, and so it gives very little feedback of, of the bones. But when you make that a big, fat tip, you can now you can lay that up against the bones and feel every bone as you cut it down the spine or on the ribs. And, and I actually understand it now that you're talking about it because yeah. that pointed knife will actually cut through where you don't want it to. Yeah, where or, or it won't you won't feel much because right. there's not a, there's not a big microphone so to speak. To, you know, but now when you make that a, a, a big tip, you can feel everything. Yeah, okay. It makes sense. And with that big rounded tip, you're now going to come against the bone and you not cut through it. And you kind of lay it up on the bone and I just, get it. and just glides right down. 
on the bone. Man. That's why stuff. this is like one of my favorite shows right? of the year. Exactly for that. Exactly this yeah. kind of stuff. There's so much stuff that you can't see. You just like, I would never, never thought that. Like, right? Of course, I mean, you, of course you use the pointed knife. That's what you use, you know? Yeah. But like, there's a reason. There's a no, reason. It's feedback. Everything so they it's do. feedback yeah. from the knife. That's cool. Oh, I like it. I dig it. Well, hey, we're going to start it off with a text because I thought this was a great question. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that this is a I'm, – I'm guessing that this is going to be a Melanie question because you're the master of – shipping and like getting things dealt with but this is a unique twist to it and uh so this is uh for those of us that travel multiple days by vehicle to san diego and drive multiple days back home with our catch um what would be your recommendation method for packing our catch this is processed by you guys in our coolers should we allow the fish to remain in your freezers for a few days to harden then use dry ice if yes how many days should we plan on and what ratio of dry ice to product that's all from augie in charlotte north carolina well, I definitely would recommend, if possible, staying over a night or two to get it frozen solid and then go grab some dry ice would okay. be the best way to go, I would say. It's for a long, for like a couple-day dry Yeah. and then maybe add some more along the way. Okay. And uh, I, I always heard, like, it, does it matter where the dry ice is positioned, like if it's under the product or over the product, or does, does I that... I believe you want it over the product. Okay. Yeah, like uh, fish, on, fish on the bottom, dry, the dry ice, ice above that. Top. And now, does that change if we're not making a multiple day drive? I know you guys have a lot of customers that are that are still potentially driving a couple hours. Maybe we're not, we're not looking for days at a time. Does does the does the method change then? If you're just talking about a few hours, just we have ice at the shop. Um, we provide that with service, and I would just ice it up real good for okay. a few hours. Completely good with an ice chest. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. And, and I've seen that, which is so cool. Like the guys backed up in the back and loading up their coolers, and Raymond and the boys with a shovel full, you know, oh, yeah. of ice, just loading it up. And you know, if they've got to drive three, four, five hours, they're totally good. I they're mean, good. That's, yeah. If you haven't experienced the level of service that Fisherman's Processing provides, it, it is it is exactly that. I mean, you when you when you when you get to your facility with the coolers, I mean, there's a crew of guys helping load. All the fish from the rack into the cooler for you, icing it up, helping you throw it in the back of the truck. I mean, it's like every step of the way. Like everything that you guys can touch, you do. Yeah, from the beginning to the end, we're taking care of the customer. That's it. I dig it. Cool. Well, hey, a great text, and uh, thanks for getting us started there, Augie. Uh, why don't we jump into the phones, Corey? Let's do it. How about uh, Don? Don Cohn from Woodland Hills. Good morning, Don. Appreciate hey. you joining us. Hi, Don. Hey, guys. Good morning. <clears throat> if I can, let me just add a little bit about that dry ice since I have a two-and-a-half to four-hour drive when I leave Fisherman's Processing. Um, with the dry ice, it's a good idea, as Melanie mentioned, to have it on top. I suggest a piece of cardboard on top of the fish, then put the dry ice, kind of create a little bit of a buffer and just leave a little gap around the edges of your ice chest on the inside. So as the CO2 goes through phase change from solid to gas, it just will naturally flow down on top of your fish. And then the last thing is if you're on a really long trip, let's say you're going to Sacramento or Northern California or outside the state, make sure you have a lot of good fresh air coming into your vehicle because CO2 does, does leak out eventually. It's got to go somewhere, and you just don't want to have it affect you as, as you're driving. So just oh, a couple of yeah, thoughts on that. Call. Like if you're traveling in an SUV or something, you want to make sure there's good, uh, good airflow through there. That's a great call. Good, good, uh, good on you, Don. Yep. Hey, uh, two quick questions. Number one, um, really appreciate what Fisherman's Processing has done to change the way that we get the quality of our fish. It's just, it's it's amazing as you were talking about, you know, Sean, as far as the years where it's gone from being popsicles to this sushi quality fish that we get. Um, <clears throat> on on the fishing, since it's changed so much and it's still evolving, are you seeing some of the boats now using the, uh, I think they call it the Ikajimi method of the, the, the spinal um, shunt that they run down the spine to help the, the fish relax? And then the other is, I love your your spices. Are you going to have any specials at the show? Yes, and yes to both those questions. Um, the techniques they use on the boat are pretty much like I think they're all doing it now. It, it's just a standard almost. So and it and it really is apparent in the quality of the fish that we end up receiving. So you know most of the boats come in and it's just beautiful. So I think they're all using the same methods. Um, and yes, we will have some specials at the show. We've got um, 
a lot of rubs and spices uh, specials and some some shirt specials. We, we but we do have some uh, show specials for you there at PCS. Cool. And this is a uh, I think we heard the guys talk about your this will be an even bigger booth than normal for you guys at PCS show this year. Yeah, we we went twenty feet. We needed a little extra room. <laughs> <laughs> too, too, come up with too many cool uh, concoctions of, uh, yeah. of, of of spices yeah, and rubs and. It started getting a little crowded, so <laughs> that's cool. We, we're spreading our arms a little bit. Okay, I yeah, like it. Do, doing it right. Yeah, no doubt. Don, appreciate it very much. Thanks for the phone call. Let's head south down to Rancho Leonero. Our buddy John Ireland is on the line this morning. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rick. Hello, Corey. Yes. How we doing, John? Good, good. Well, you know, it's been kind of a windy winter, but uh, about that past ten days, it's been the weather, uh, the wind calmed down, and. Uh, We've had quite a few boats going out. Water temps about 68 to 71 degrees, and uh, fishing's been pretty good, darn good for February. Um, we're getting a lot of big yellowtail, which is not unusual for this time of year with the water temp, what it is and all that, but they're catching quite a few. There was um, about four or five days ago, there had to be 30 boats right off in front there to that drop off right in front of the ranch, about a mile, mile and a half right off the ranch has been producing a lot of fish. Live bait's been hard to get, so they're uh, they're dropping uh, a ballyhoo, frozen ballyhoo down, or uh, bouncing iron. But they're having success. They're picking up fish. I didn't see any yellowtail under 20 pounds. Let's see, the biggest one ran about 25, 25, well, actually 35 pounds to 40. Uh, pretty good size yellowtail. And, I'm, I'm always uh, blown anyway. away with the yellowtail at the ranch. Like, I... I don't know where or how it happens, but like you guys don't make small ones down there. <laughs> like the quality is always so impressive uh, in the East yeah. Cape on yellowtail. Yeah, you're right. You know, and it's fickle, right? Because uh, it always happens this time of year, and they're in, kind of in and out. And uh, we'll have a we'll have a you know six good weeks, maybe two months of a pretty darn good yellowtail fishing. Some real whoppers come out of there. We don't get any. Uh, we don't get any firecrackers. We get the we get the big boys for sure, and then they're gone, you know. So, uh, but really an interesting fish and kind of a rare one for us. And that. so they're happening right now, that's for sure. And uh, everybody's taking advantage of uh, of the flat water and uh, getting out there. We're also catching, believe it or not, uh, some nice dorado. We had uh, we we just sent one boat last week ourselves out of the hotel and. Uh, they picked up three Dorado from 15 to 20 pounds, all of them bulls, and uh, and released the striped marlin. They were kind of fishing on top, you know, not going down for the yellowtail. And uh, so there's fish around. It just it looks like it might be a good season here. We're looking forward to it. I love it. John, well, I'm certainly glad to hear it. It was super fun to get to see you at the Bart Hall Show in Del Mar, and we're looking forward to seeing you again at Long Beach. And, man, a great report for uh, – being this early in the season, having yellowtail and already marlin and dorado, I'm with you. I, I think you're in for a. I think you're in for a really good one. Yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to a good season, Rick. It's going to be good to be back in business coming up here March 1st. No doubt, buddy. Well, if somebody wants to book a trip and come get in on the fun with you, how's the best way to go down to the ranch? Thanks, Rick. It's eight hundred six four six two two five two or ranchlanero dot com. Awesome, John. Great report, and uh, appreciate a nice early one. And, man, I'm glad to hear the fishing's so good. We'll talk to you next week. Yes, you will. It's good to be back on the air. Thank awesome. you, Rick. Thanks, John. Sorry. Appreciate okay. that very much. Hey, let's jump back into the phones, Corey. Let's do it, Rick. How about uh, Dave? Dave Cohn from Spring Valley. Good morning, Dave. Appreciate you joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Oh, good morning, guys. And, and great Dave? to hear fishermen's processing on the air this morning. You guys, I, I, just for me. You guys do such a fantastic job. I've been using you for years. I, I fish uh, quite a bit on day and a half and three days, and always such impeccable service. Those guys, you you said it at the very end. Those guys that are helping you out and packing, giving you ice, and helping you. I, I mean, I'm sixty something years old. I just can't lift these ice chests in my truck anymore. You guys are so helpful, and I really do appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's right. So, cool. so good, here's good I got two quick questions for you. Please, yeah, please. Two quick questions for you. Uh, the first one is: Are you going to have? Uh, hopefully, you're not going to have a shortage on the uh, thicker bags this year. No, no, <laughs> no. no. We, we almost like 
75 to 80 percent of our business is going with the five mil really? bag versus the three mil bag and i i'm all on board with that it's just a superior bag it really is it seals better there's less failures there's it's a it's a great bag and it really does protect your fish better. Is the seal the main difference between the three mil and the five mil? Like what 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 are you gaining? Uh, it's a couple extra couple extra dollars to do heavier bag versus lighter bag. Yeah. Uh, it's ten cents more. Right per pound. Ten okay. cents more. Like that's yeah. it. Yeah. And like, the bag is a like, way better. Bag. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it way better. And it gives you the seal is better because you got more material that can weld together, so you, your seal's better. Got it. And then the thickness of it gives it more durability for you know just bumping up against the other fish. I mean, just they're like two rocks colliding with a piece of plastic in between it. So the thicker that plastic, the better. I noticed the big difference because I uh, you know I, I don't have a ton of space and I keep my fish in a chest freezer, and so it's just the nature of the beast. There's always for me gonna. I mean, I try to keep it in little baskets and bags, but it just, it just doesn't work. Like I'm always, I'm always like pulling, you know, pushing things to the side to try and find what's down below. And like the switching from three to five made the difference. Like you, you know, t- come to the end of the season, there would always be some three mil bags that had that had popped open, had punctured, and you know, all of a sudden there was freezer burn where there wasn't ever in in the heavier duty bag. Like. At least for a guy like me that's always rummaging through a freezer that's not, you know, upright and perfectly compartmentalized, it, it was a world of difference. Yeah, I, I think you fall into the normal class. I think everybody has the same challenge, uh, and the five mils is the solution for that. That's cool. Hey, appreciate it very much. All right. Hey, we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hook Up. More from uh, Sean and Melanie, man. I'm really enjoying this one. We're going to be right back on the Let's Talk Hook Up after Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. It's coming soon. The most exciting sports show of the year. The all-new, bigger, and better 13th Annual Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Tackle Boat and Travel Show. March 2nd to the 5th at the O.C. Fairn Event Center in Costa Mesa. Check out hundreds of sport fishing exhibitors, manufacturers, tackle dealers, fishing boats, and fishing resorts taking up all seven buildings of the fairgrounds, 217,000 square feet, plus seminars and a free kids' trout pond. This year, the PCS show has added fresh water to cover bass and trout. Learn from some of the top names in the sport fishing industry, from catching giant bluefin, swordfish, calico bass, and more. Take advantage of incredible show specials from major tackle retailers and boat dealers. Talk to fishing travel destinations for full days, Thursday, March 2nd to Sunday, March Fifth, the 13th annual Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Tackle Boat and Travel Show at the OC Fair and Event Center in Costa Mesa. Don't miss it. Dana Landing in Mission Bay is the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. This is Mia. Come see me and our expert staff for everything you need for your next fishing trip, food, bait, tackle, beverages, and more. Our tackle shop is certainly one of San Diego's finest. We have you covered from bay bass to big tuna and people that can help you get set up right. We also have Dougie, one of the best reel repair guys around. Need freshwater tackle? Head to East County Bait and Tackle, the best rods and reels. The hottest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has an amazing staff who love to share their passion for fishing. We now also have Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle, both fresh and saltwater tackle, right in the heart of Lemon Grove. ECBT is at the end of the 67 Freeway on Maple View and Lakeside. Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle take 94 to Broadway and Lemon Grove. And Dana Landing is right next to the Dana Lawn Tramp in Mission Bay. Check danalanding.com for more details. All right, it's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. And, man, how on a day like this with all this great fishing do we not talk about Talica? I know we do it so much, but I don't know that there's ever been a two-speed reel created better than that Shimano Talica from size and power and smoothness, but also the ability to fish a live bait. I don't think there's anything like a Shimano Talica. The only question I have is are you going to have them at PCS? Oh, well, man. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. doubt about that. You you are right, though. I mean, what a what a great opportunity. PCS, tons of retailers, all with that Shimano product. Probably one of the single best times to buy a Shimano reel is coming up next weekend at the PCS show. And then no talk to the boys it. from Shimano, too. Yeah, you got it. A big booth there. Going to be well represented. All of your questions answered. Going to be a great time. Check it out next weekend at the PCS Festival or any Shimano dealer. Or you can check out more information at Shimano.com. 
Safe travel should always include travel insurance. This is Bob Dawson at Dawson & Associates. We offer many different plans, from one-year plans to single-trip plans. Traveling twice or more a year, an annual plan will cover most every trip that you make. Also, if you get injured on a trip, it'll fly you back home or fly you to a hospital of your choice, and it's worldwide coverage once you're 100 miles from home. So call me at 619-990-3068 or go to safariglobaltravel.com. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Cookup. And, man, we're just having a great time with Sean and Melanie from Fisherman's Processing, and we were just discussing, like, all these different ways of uh, fish care and fish prep, actually, you know, and using the spices and rubs on different types of fish and all kinds of good stuff you, while, while we were at, uh, at commercial there. You were just telling us the story. You're a ceviche spice guy. Well, it's I I have used it, actually, on, a like, a zelandiato type fish, like a butterfly the fish open, and use that as... Part of the fish rub, yeah. actually, oh, you yeah. know, b- before putting it over the mesquite. No rules, man. Oh, Just, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. like sweet Cajun? Pile it on. Yeah, yeah. that's me. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. Yeah, no doubt. Well, hey, as promised, it's time for the catch report. We're going to find out what's biting up and down the beach, Corey. Hey, and focus your offshore fishing in the best areas by using terrafin charts. Uh, get your temperature, chlorophyll, and more. And terrafin is the professional's choice for dependability and accuracy. And now with terrafin mobile, you can download your latest charts on your iPad, your iPhone, or Android. And then uh, check terrafin.com for more information. You got it, man. Well, let's head on up to Dana War Sport Fishing. We got the man, Captain Brian Woolley's on the line. What's up, Woolley? Good morning, Brian. Hey, good morning, guys. What's happening? We're having fun talking fish this morning. We're drying out. Right on. <laughs> Finally, some sunshine, right? It's about time. Dude, tell me about it, man. Super short week. I think we had both out two days this last week. So, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, pushing through here. So, three-quarter day for us this week on the days that we did get off the dock. That sculpin and whitefish is probably a center stage for us with a little bit of sand dab kind of mixed into that stuff. The usual zones down there off Camp Pendleton that we have been fishing day in and day out here the last uh, month and a half or so, that 40 to 50 fathom water. ton of bait down there as well. <clears throat> um, I know traditionally in many years past we've seen some game fish in that zone. Haven't seen any sign of that and all that bait, but uh, this was the time of year when we started to see that stuff, so we'll probably incorporate a little bit of looking around um, in that stuff here during this next week. Uh Maybe we'll get off the dock sometime this week. Uh, Tuesday, we've got our half-price deal. Uh, jump on that if you're planning on coming. I know there's some weather. Looks uh, like some more midweek weather, followed by some good weather, though, through the weekend. So we're uh, hoping to get away from the dock here on that deal on our three-quarter day. Half-day scene, you know, kind of more of the same with some bass action on the light tackle, the lighter lines, that finesse style fishing for sure. Um, some white fish in a couple different deeper spots close to the harbor. And uh, some catch and release on the sheep head as well. But uh, this morning I got to report that water temp, 52 degrees. What? Um, Chilly and cold, but, you know, it didn't take that big of a hit. It was 55 before the storm blew through here. But uh, the big deal is going to be all this runoff and, you know, the shakeup. That's going to take a good few days to uh, settle out and for things to kind of get back to where they need to be on that half-day scene. So it might be some tough fishing here. I know, right? But Crazy stuff. So that's kind of it for us, but what a perfect time for a uh, sport fishing festival, yep. right, to be coming through this week. So we'll be there at the show. We'll be in Booth 170 in that uh, Los Alamitos building. So uh, come by, stop by, check us out. We'll have uh, some discounts and some products and stuff like that. We'll be talking fishing uh, and whatnot there as well. So we're looking forward to uh, ending our week on a, on a good note there at the PCS show. So that's it for us. If you guys want to hop on a trip this week, Again, just book around the weather. Our number here, 949-496-5794. Of course, you can hit us on the web and book online at danawarf.com. Great job, Willie. We're excited. Look forward to seeing you at the show. We're going to be in the same building at Fisherman's Landing there. And, uh, yeah, totally looking forward to coming to see you. It's going to be very easy. As soon as you walk into the show, just make a right-hand turn, and that gets you to Brian Willie. Right on. Well, you can leave your big box rubber bands at home this time, right? Or are you going you gonna to bring that with you? I mean, there's no Doug up there this year. It's just the inmates running. The oh yeah, room. Wild so, West. So yeah, so we'll have a we'll have a much larger box of, of bands this year than a, no, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> going to be a lot of fun, buddy. Willie, we'll look forward to seeing you and the whole right, crew of Adana War Sport Fishing at the PCS show next weekend. 
All right, we'll keep you guys safe. Thanks, buddy. Great we'll job. Check you later. Appreciate the report. Bye. Well, hey, while we're waiting for our surf guru, Gundy Gunderson, to come along, I had another fun text come through. Uh, Melanie and Sean, I really appreciate your business. From picking up my harvest at the dock to bagging to placing them in the coolers with the ice at the same morning, it's all amazing. Your pokey mix is excellent, too. I'm about to use your brine mix to smoke my tuna, and I'm wondering what you think about cold smoking tuna. Uh, this has been another great show. Uh, that's all from Stephen uh, in Fairfield, California. Well, I've never cold smoked tuna, so I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I've never done it. But give it—I mean, I know cold smoking like salmon's great. And what? What? I mean, I, I'm you know being a, a novice. Like what? What? I, obviously, um, you know what? What is the difference? You just the the heat's completely off off site, so you're just <clears throat> pumping smoke through. Like what? What's yeah, the? My understanding is it's just the smoke itself okay. is, is doing the the curing and the in the cooking. Uh, it was not really. It's like almost like locks. Okay. You know, they're, yeah. They're, they're right. cold smoke, so it's almost like raw still. Okay. But it's cured through the smoke. And wow. and that's typically what it's done. Cold smoking is usually done with salmon. Exactly. That, and so we don't get much salmon around here, so okay. I haven't done the cold smoking. Yeah. Oh, Interesting. I, I, anxious to hear. Now, is that what you do? Like one of the things again that you got us super hooked on uh, was all the smoked cheeses that you guys do <laughs> is that how you do the cheese as well is, is or is there heat applied to that when you're no that's definitely uh, a cold smoke okay. process yeah otherwise you end up sure with a yeah big yeah. Mess. yeah yeah otherwise you end up with nachos like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. got that by make me hungry with yeah. that one Rick. right on Steve. well a good question and yeah you'll have to you'll have to try and report back man anxious to anxious to hear well the phones are absolutely packed solid Corey, let's jump back into it yes them. how about john john call from Escondido. Good morning, John. Appreciate you joining us. Hey, good morning, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, so my, I have two questions. Uh, one question is um, I'm, I'm, I'm booked on some trips. You guys are taking care of my fish. Uh, but I'm on some waiting list on some other boats that uh, uh, I may get to go on or I may not get to go on. Should I book a spot with you just in case? Um, and then if I don't go, let you know. And the other is, um, I forgot the other question. I'll, yeah, no, no worries, John. Yeah, that's a that's a unique one for sure. And 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 I mean, like you say, that that poses part of the new thing. You know, you you just we talk about all the time reservation so key if you want to get to utilize that service. But uh, yeah, what what what's the best case you think for for his situation, Melanie? As soon as you make your reservation on the boat, then we're the next call. Okay. So, and I would always recommend doing that as soon as you can secure, secure your trip yeah. on the boat. Because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to take a spot that in theory doesn't exist yet. You and know, you best a, case scenario, yeah. you're going to get on that trip. But if, if, you know, if you're not lucky enough to, and the trip stays full, you know, then you're blocking a piece of time that, you know, that, that is, that is for somebody potentially that is on, on board. Exactly. Sure. That's exactly right. And that's just part of the, that's just part of the, part of the service. Hopefully you make it through and everybody gets, it gets in, but reservation is so key. We talk about it every week when we're talking about our fisherman's processing. But again, Melanie, give us the rundown. When somebody is making, uh, when somebody does book a trip, you need to be their very next call. Exactly. I recommend it. Yeah, highly. Um, and you make it so. It is. It's just. It is so easy. Text in your name, boat, return date, and we get back to everybody within the same day. That's uh, 619-255-3128. 3128, yeah. And, and literally, so if somebody if somebody's wanting to do that, that's that's literally that number. Send a text. Hey, I'm Rick. I'm going on the I'm going on the Shogun. I'm I'm on trip. You know, this day we leave September the third. We come back this day. Um, I want to make a reservation. Exactly. And 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 then I'll get a a, a text You'll back a or a phone call back or whatever. Or okay, back. got yeah. it. Yeah. And Simple. That, yeah, and that's it. And now you're now you're set, and you're in line. Your fish is getting cut, and you're all good. I mean, is yeah. there any other way to make a? Re- that's like the only way, right? This that's is the it. best way to do it. Yeah. The, okay. That's the only way. The, the only, only way. way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there it is. And it's it's super efficient by I doing mean, it this way. You get a record of that you have a reservation. From. Right. So you you if there's a mistake made, you can show us the confirmation text that you had a reservation, and we would honor that. There it is. I like it. Yeah, cool. clean. Well, let's jump back into the phones, Corey. How about Hills? Hills calling from Ventura. Good morning, Hills. Hey, good morning, you guys. Um, hey, uh, I I want to give appreciation to Let's Talk Hook Up and Pete Gray because every single sponsor, product, service is the absolute best in sport fishing in our area. And um, I personally got to witness um, 
uh, Pete hooking up between hands and knives and fisherman's processing because I went up to Pete at the Fred Hall and I, I said, hey, do you know if fisherman's processing uses hands and knives? You know, and he goes, I don't know. Hills, let's go, let's go ask Sean. And then, so we go trooping over there, and then, and then uh, Sean goes, I don't know about those knives. And then, uh, and Pete goes, okay, let's let's go check them out. And then we go over there, <laughs> and I think that was the beginning of that relationship. And um, you know, I, I have learned so much on this show, and uh, just been great experience. I'm a big fan. Um, and I got one question is uh, if people cut, they cut their bluefin on, on their own boat, I think you're required. To, you got to have the belly, the collar, all these parts, and you got to put it all back in a bag and keep it. But at fisherman's processing, you don't, you don't worry about that, right? Just ask for your bellies and collars if you want them. That, yeah, you ask if you want. The bellies are automatic. You'll get your bellies no matter what. Collars you need to ask for. It's a, it's a separate service. Um, yeah, and we don't have to do the fishing game uh, regulation cuts on in our shop. That's something so they can identify the fish off the boat. It's like the the if uh, until the fish is like landed, you know, on land, they need that, like you say, for identifying reasons. But you get the fish once it's already, you know, you know, you're you're the second step. You've already that fish has already made it to land. If it needs to be identified, it can be at the time of the dock, and then you get to you you know you you coined that term table ready, and and that's exactly what you produce. Exactly. And that's, and I think your service, honestly, Sean, has made like the collars and the bellies, and you know the what used to be quote unquote like secondary pieces now are like primary, right? Yeah, like most you know, people, the words the, out definitely. It used yeah. to be. Just, be a small group of people that wanted the collars, but now it's almost everybody. At least not everybody, but like a good half a of lot. them. Yeah. You, you guys for sure turned me on to that. That it was yellowtail, and then back in the day, those white sea bass collars. Cool. And it's like, it, it, it's I don't know. It's like the teeny bit like intimidating looking because it's just not that perfect square regular block of piece fish. of meat. Yeah. But man, one you guys do such a good job of like cleaning it and preparing it, and it's in the backpack bag, so it you know it looks a lot less, but like. You you brush that thing with a little olive oil, put a killer FP gourmet spice on that thing, and yeah. put that thing on the Traeger, and then just oh. you can't help but like go to town. It's fingers and hands. Like it might be the best piece on the fish. Yeah, it's oh, so good. It's 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 really good. It, it's worth. We charge five dollars a collar for the like yellowtail that size with bluefin or six fifty on yeah. fish over fifty pounds. Yeah. Okay. And. We put a stopwatch on it one time. It takes like two minutes to get a collar out, clean it, and bag it. I mean, it takes like a, it adds two minutes. To, and you do that ten times, and you know, you, you're starting to add up some time. Oh, you don't need to justify to me. So, you're the reason I, I you, you're the reason I do them, and yeah. it's because you put so much work into making them such a clean, ready to go product. And we yeah. don't recommend doing them on fish under like 15 pounds for sure, because okay. there just isn't much meat you don't on get there. Enough. Yeah, got so. it. Definitely. But but on a fifteen pound yellow, I mean that's like a perfect that, collar, man. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, just not like a ten pounder or, or anything like that. And I've even yeah. done like the collar off a two hundred pound bluefin, like on the Traeger, on the even over mesquite. Oh my gosh. A little ceviche rub on there. Stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Hey, hey, well a fun text came through um, kind of along those same lines, and it was from Chef Jeff uh, from Costa Mesa. His morning, y'all. I want to know um, if you guys can do tuna ribs. Um, is that a, uh, a service that we could ask for? Please don't tell anybody, especially Corey, how good grilled tuna ribs can be. Oh, man. We have a few people request that. Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of taking the ribs out and leaving, leaving a little meat on them. Um, but, yeah, not too many people do it. Tough to vacuum seal those. Cause I'll bet because you're going to poke through the yeah. bags. So not a real common request, but we, we see it now and then. We, we accommodate. Yeah, you you guys just – I always say the same thing with fishermen's processing. People always ask me all these questions, you know, maybe in the tackle store. I'm like, man, just ask. Like, Melanie makes anything happen. <laughs> like, just <laughs> just call those guys and ask. Like, they'll figure it out. They always do. Melanie has the most patience of anybody I know. Period. She, <laughs> period. I agree. She <laughs> deals with you can't believe some of the requests and, and some of the things that she deals with and 
God bless her. She what? just go, she just, <laughs> she just checks them off. You just, I, you go, go. I can't believe because I'm about the worst, and she's a, a personal friend of mine. And I still just like I'm really sorry, man. I totally forgot. Like, is there any way I can? Oh yeah, no problem. I got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's, yeah. oh. Boy, we got a, a lot of fun, and uh, yeah. hopefully we'll uh, we'll catch up with our surf guru Gundy Gunderson. But in the meantime, Corey, let's uh, let's keep rolling. All right. How about uh, who do you think, Greg? Greg? Let's go to Greg. Greg from Paris. Good you, morning, Greg. You got it, Greg. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Good to hear from all of you. Um, used your service before. It's great. Uh, I got a question. Right at the beginning of the show, you talked about how to defrost your fish, and maybe I'm doing it wrong. So what do yeah, you recommend? Explain, explain for us the uh, the Sean Sebring Fisherman's Processing right. Method, because it, it it, it'll change. It'll change. It changes the way that you appreciate your fish out of the freezer, Greg. It's 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 a it's a different deal. This is all on YouTube, so you don't have to take notes. You can go back to YouTube and check it out. And where on a fisherman's processing uh, channel? Okay. Uh, on YouTube, and basically you take your you have a frozen piece of fish in a in a vacuum sealed bag. First thing you do is open the bag and take the fish out. Completely wrap it in paper towels. Lay some paper towels on a, on a plate and put the wrapped fillet on the plate in the refrigerator and let it defrost. If the paper towels get saturated with water, switch them out with fresh paper towels until it's fully defrosted, and you won't believe the difference. You Incredible. Won't, you won't believe the color that returns to the fillet. It, it, it looks like a, it, it's a different looking piece of fish than what came out of the freezer when you wrapped it up the first time. Oh, for sure. It's it, almost looks like it, it was fresh. It's, it's like crazy. Frozen, yeah. and, and, I mean, I, I have, you know, I have been there before. Oh, my God, I forgot dinner, whatever. I, you know, put the thing in a in a bowl and run water over it. And, I mean, that still cooks up fine, but it's a completely different thing on the plate at the end of the day than when you do it correctly. Yeah, getting that water away from it and, and doing a slow defrost. That's that, that's the, the key to the refrigerator is a slow defrost rather than a, a, a lot of people just put it in water or something to do a fast defrost. And those ice crystals break down too much or too fast and it does damage to the meat itself and that's where you get kind of a mushy result yeah if you do the slow defrost those ice crystals go away slowly and it preserves the quality of the meat what's the amount of time someone should expect we've all got freezers full of this killer bluefin from last year if i'm going to pull a piece out use the fisherman's processing method wrap it change the wrapping one or two times like What's the amount of time we should expect that fillet to go from rock hard to ready to but ready to cook? It depends on how cold it starts and how cold your refrigerator is. But generally speaking, overnight to maybe two days mm-hmm. is is what you can probably expect to have to yeah. wait. That's what I'm saying. If you're if you're going to do it, like put a little preparation, know that it's going to go down, and and you know give yourself the time to to let it let it defrost right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. If you yeah. if you can plan ahead and do it that way, that's cool. All right. Hey, we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hook Up. It's uh, a lot of fun talking all this uh, fish preservation when we return on Let's Talk Hook Up app, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. The PCS Show is coming, and we will have our first-ever booth at the show. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Check us out in the all-new Saltwater Building at the PCS Show in Costa Mesa, where we will have some amazing deals for you on rods, reels, lures, and clothing. Everything at the Fisherman's Landing Tackle booth will be on sale. And as always, our expert staff will help you select that perfect setup for the fish you want to pursue. For Saltwater Tackle at the PCS Show, your best Stop is the Fisherman's Landing Tackle Booth. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing offers half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day trips on the Liberty. Many trips can be easily booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. 
This is Art Taylor of The Searcher. Celia, Team Searcher, and I would like to thank all of our loyal customers for their support for the past 40 years. The Searcher has air-conditioned cabins, an RSW system to preserve your catch, a fantastic crew, and awesome food. If you are looking for a great fishing adventure, our 2023 schedule is available online now at searchersportfishing.com. Call Celia or Aaron in the office at 619-226-2403. That's 619-226-2403. One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges, how do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hook Up listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka. All for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaskan halibut is your target. The expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. It's Ford Truck Month, San Diego. Time to get up and get into a new Ford F-150. Part of the F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 46 years straight. And here's some big news. There's a great selection of Ford F-150s in stock and ready for delivery today. So visit your San Diego County Ford dealer and see all the fantastic offers on America's best-selling trucks that are available during Truck Month. They'll be glad to hook you up. Hi, it's John Ireland from Rancho Land Air Resorts. Come join us at the Bart Hall Shows this coming February at the Del Mar Fairgrounds and March at the Long Beach Convention Center. It's going to be a great time. Look forward to seeing you there.